Greetings. Welcome to Electronics 2, lecture number 38. I am Bezad Razavi. Today we will go over some examples of a voltage current feedback, a topology that we studied last time, and then we will move on to a third topology called the current voltage feedback system. All right. So, what we saw last time was that uh, in order to sense the voltage at the output of a system and process it in the feedback network and return a current, we place uh, this port of the feedback network in parallel with the output to measure a voltage. And then we place this port of the uh, feedback network also in parallel with the input because we're trying to subtract two currents. So to subtract or add two currents, we always put the current sources in parallel. And then we analyzed this and we saw that as a result of feedback, the closed loop gain is lower by a factor of one plus the loop gain, which is to be expected. But also interestingly, the input impedance has gone down by one plus the loop gain. And this is because the circuit is returning a current, it's trying to make a better trans impedance amplifier. And that means that the input impedance should be lower. A good trans impedance amplifier has a very low input impedance. All right, and the output impedance also goes down simply because we're sensing the output voltage. We're trying to make the output a better voltage source. All right, so remember that we call this the open loop uh, trans impedance amplifier, and this whole thing the closed loop trans impedance amplifier, or TIA. All right, we looked at uh, one example of how we would implement this idea. And then uh, we wanted to improve that example by increasing this gain. And then we encountered some difficulty. So let's go and see what we have. All right, so if you remember, we said, I can use a common gate stage as a TIA, right? Because if a current flows, through the source with the base at some voltage. And the current flows through the source and goes to the drain, flows through this resistor, generates a voltage. So that's a perfectly legitimate TIA, right? We take it, we give a current, we get a voltage. All right. And then uh, what we wanted to do in the first example last time was we took this output voltage and we converted it to a current by a transistor, and then we injected the current here, right? And that was good, it was, it was fine, the feedback was negative, we found the closed loop parameters. All right, but then I said, I am not happy with the amount of open loop gain that I have here, RD, right? The open loop gain is RD ohms, the unit is ohms, right? This unit R0 has a unit of ohms. So I wanted to add another stage, to increase the gain. So if I add another stage here, so we call this M1, we call this M3 last time, and RD1, RD2. So now we know that the open loop gain is higher, right? The open loop gain will be uh, V out over I in, and it will be equal to RD1 times minus GM3 RD2. So we'll calculate that shortly. Don't worry about that too much. Uh, but the, the problem we faced was that if I try to place a transistor here for the feedback network and try to connect it here, I'm thinking this transistor, which we called M2, senses this voltage, converts it to a current. That's what a transistor does, right, in saturation. Uh, converts the current and draws the current here. So it looks like we have nice current feedback here, right? But the problem was that this loop now has positive feedback. You can see that from here to here, I have a cascode. From here to here, I have a common source stage. Each of them inverts. So the net result is that there's no inversion as we go around the loop. So the, pos the feedback is positive. All right, so that's where we stop. That's where we have difficulty. Okay, so. Uh, we can't do that. I'm going to remove M2, right? M2 doesn't really work in this case. So let's just uh, erase M2. 
And now we have to see what we can do, right? We need a feedback network here, and we are asking what kind of circuitry can be used there. So let me go back here, and so I'm trying to build a feedback network here. And uh, the idea is that this is K. K senses this voltage and draws a current, right? Uh, we have to see the, that that network sh must not invert the signal. If it does, then again, we have positive feedback. So it must not invert. Okay, all right, so what do we do here? Well, if we make an observation, uh, we can actually simplify this. So let me make an observation here. A good TIA, a good trans impedance amplifier, right, like this or like that, a good TIA has a low input impedance, right? A low input impedance, which means a small input voltage. Of course, we're talking about small signal operation. So if this current is something reasonable, Right, it's a sinusoid coming in with a peak of 100 microamps, 500 microamps, something, right? So it's a sinusoid coming in. And this input impedance is low, then this current times that impedance is a small voltage, right? So we have a sinusoid here, but it has small swings. All right, so that's what we mean. The input voltage is small. Okay, so a good TIA also a good TIA has a high gain, right? So what does that mean? It means that uh, it generates a large voltage swing here. So you give it a little uh, sinusoid here, you get a big sinusoid here, right? We gave it a sinusoidal current here. We got a big sinusoidal voltage here. All right, has a high gain, so uh, a large output voltage. So far, so good? Okay, all right. <clears throat> so here's the situation. I have a sinusoidal current going to my circuit. It generates a little sinusoidal voltage here. So let me draw that in red to avoid confusion with the current. So there's a small sinusoidal voltage here. We call it V in. V in is not particularly of interest to us, right? Because the input of interest is a current. But we also observe that yes, there's a bit of V in because the input impedance is not zero, but it's small. And at the same time, we have a V out, we have a gen an output voltage, the circuit is producing, that's the useful output, and the gain is high, so it has a large swing here. All right, okay. Now, uh, what do we expect K to do? What uh, it has to do is, it has to take uh, a generator current, so this current, we, let's call it IF, feedback current, must be proportional to V out. Right? We know that uh, that's what the feedback network is supposed to do here. The K is that proportionality factor, right? So we say the current that it generates is equal to K times the voltage that we have at the output. That's what it should do. Okay. So uh, I will propose a very simple solution. I will connect. I will connect in a different color a single resistor between here and here, call it RF. Just the resistor from this output back to this input. And I will say that this RF is a good approximation of the feedback network that we want. Why? Well, let's find the current through RF. How much is this current? Okay, so let's call that IF, right? 
And what we have is this. We have IF is equal to this voltage minus this voltage divided by this resistance, right? So V out minus this voltage, which is called V in with respect to ground, divided by RF. And now we go back to our observation, which said V out is large, V in is small. So I can neglect this, and I can say this is approximately equal to V out over RF. And voila, that's what uh, the feedback network is supposed to do, right? It's supposed to generate a current proportional to the output voltage, and this resistor does that job. All right? So in other words, a resistor can approximate a current source if the uh, voltage swings, uh, if one voltage on one side uh, is much greater than the other voltage, so that uh, we can say that the current through this is approximately given by this voltage divided by this resistance, right? Okay, uh, in practice, we would like RF to be somewhat large so that it doesn't load this resistor and so on, but again, we don't go through that deta those details yet. All right, so the key message that I have here is that we can use a resistor as a feedback network that senses the voltage and returns the current. And it's just the result of uh, these observations and these approximations, right? Okay, so now that we have this network, we should be able to analyze it, right? So we want to find the closed loop gain and input impedance and output impedance, see what we get. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we say we are looking for the closed loop parameters of the circuit. This is an example of uh, voltage current feedback, and uh, we have implemented uh, that abstraction at the transistor level, and we would like to see what it does. All right, well, uh, we need to find the open loop parameters first. So, open uh, loop parameters. As usual, we're looking for the open loop gain. So gain is how much? The open loop gain would be uh, this current enters the circuit and becomes a voltage eventually. So V out over I in without the feedback network. That's the open loop voltage, open loop gain, trans impedance gain. So last time we saw that for this single stage, the gain is just RD1. Now uh, we have minus GM3 RD2. So you can say that uh, uh, V out over I in is equal to Vx over I in times V out over Vx, right? So we say V out over Vx times Vx over I in. So V out over Vx is minus GM3 RD2. It's a simple common source stage. As usual, we assume lambda is zero. And then Vx over I in this voltage over this current is just this resistor because that current has nowhere else to go but RD1. So the gain comes out to be RD1 times minus GM3 RD2. Okay, that's the open loop gain of a circuit. You can think of this as uh, this whole thing without the feedback resistor as an amplifier that we bought, a trans impedance amplifier. All right, how about the input impedance? We saw this last time, it's one over GM1. So uh, input impedance is one over GM1. And the output impedance uh, is RD2, right? Before we connect anything else, it's RD2. So output impedance is RD2. Okay, so these are the open loop parameters. All right, okay. So I have the open loop parameters. I'm looking for the closed loop parameters. And these are related by one plus the loop gain, right? So you get multiplied or divided by one plus the loop gain. So I need to find the loop gain. The loop gain is equal to the open loop gain, 
a1, right, times k, right? So a1 times k. So I have a1. I have found a1. a1 is the open loop gain, this whole thing. So what I need is just k. How much is k? All right. Okay, so that's the key point that we have to figure out now. Okay, what is the definition of k? Definition of k is the amount of current we draw from here divided by the voltage. Right? This current divided by this voltage. So how much is that current? Uh, we just found that, right? We said IF is equal to V out over RF. So then uh, K is just 1 over RF, right? So K is 1 over RF. So it takes a bit of time to uh, really get used to the concept that uh, K, the current that we draw here divided by this voltage, is equal to RF. But it really comes from that simple approximation, right? So we know for sure that this current is equal to this voltage minus this voltage divided by RF. If this voltage is much smaller than this voltage, then it's just V out over RF, and that's what we get. All right. Okay. All right, so that is what we obtain in this case. Um, okay, now I can go ahead and find the closed loop parameters. So, closed loop gain is equal to the open loop gain, which is this whole thing, divided by 1 plus the loop gain. So, minus GM3 RD2 RD1 divided by 1 plus the loop gain. K times the open loop gain. K is this, 1 over RF times this whole thing, right? Minus GM3 RD2 RD1. All right, do we have a problem? Yes, we have a problem. What is the problem? The problem is that in the denominator, we're supposed to have one plus a positive number. But now we ended up with one plus a negative number. What happened? Something went wrong. Is the feedback positive? No, the feedback is not positive, right? The feedback is negative. If I break the loop anywhere, I can see that, right? So let's break the loop here. If I raise this voltage, this is the common gate stage, this voltage goes up, this voltage goes down. So this voltage goes down, right? The feedback is negative. So what happened? Why do I have a problem here? Well, I made a mistake in calculating K. Yes. This current, IF, is V out over RF approximately, as we saw. But that's not the current that we're supposed to have. Remember, the current of K is supposed to point this way, right? It's supposed to point into the output of K. But this IF is pointing out of the output of K. So the actual current corresponding to this block diagram should be pointing this way, and that would be minus IF, right? So that means that K actually needs a negative sign here. So that becomes positive and everyone is happy. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the closed loop uh, input impedance. So that's just uh, the original value, which is 1 over GM1 divided by 1 plus the loop gain, which is this whole thing, right? So we have 1 plus GM3 RD2 RD1 divided by RF. That's the closed loop input impedance. It goes down by 1 plus the loop gain, as we saw before. And the output impedance also goes down by the same factor. So the closed loop output impedance comes out to be RD2 divided by 1 plus the loop gain, 1 plus GM3 RD2 RD1 divided by RF. 
Okay, so these are the parameters of the circuit. And uh, so we can see that, again, our knowledge of feedback and the ability to identify this as one known configuration, namely voltage current feedback, quickly allows us to write out everything, right? Without writing that many KVLs and KCLs. Okay, so that is another example that I wanted to pursue here. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's go look at another example. <clears throat> uh, we go to another page. And this example will be even simpler. So here's an example. Okay, so I will redraw the circuit we had on the previous page because I need it uh, briefly, okay? So here's the circuit that we built. Right? Okay. And the amplifier uh, that we bought, the open loop amplifier, is this, right? So it's uh, this. This is what we generally call A1. In this case, it's a trans impedance amplifier. And what we see is that we placed a resistor from the output of the amplifier to the input to create feedback. And this feedback senses the output voltage and returns a proportional current to the input. Right? Okay, so then uh, can I just draw this generally? Can I say something like this? This is A1, some amplifier A0 maybe, and uh, this is I1, and this is RF, and this is the out. Is that acceptable? Can I consider this also as voltage current feedback? Right? Yes, why not? It's the same principle, right? Uh, especially if the voltage here is pretty small, I can still say that the current flowing through RF is approximately given by V out over RF, right? And that current comes back and gets subtracted from this guy, it goes into the amplifier. So that's perfectly fine. All right. Okay. Of course, we want the feedback to be negative, which means this amplifier has to be an inverting amplifier, right? So because you see that there's an inversion from here to here. So that's to be an inverting amplifier. Okay, not a problem. So maybe I can draw it using an op amp. Let's go by an op amp and make a, an inverting amplifier and do this and place this resistor here, inject a current here and take the voltage here. Is that okay? We call this op amp A0. So the feedback is negative, right? And uh, we know that the gain is pretty high, so we have large voltage swings here, small voltage swings here. After all, what do we call this node in the circuit? We call it a virtual ground, remember, from electronics one? So this is a virtual ground because the voltage swings are very small. And that means that the current through RF is approximately proportional to V out, so we are sensing the output voltage, returning a current, and subtracting it from the input. Okay, so this indeed is a trans impedance amplifier, right? So we will uh, mark it as such. So we'll say this is a TIA, okay, trans impedance amplifier. But what is strange about this is that in contrast to the original implementation where the open loop amplifier had a low input resistance, 1 over GM, in this case, the open loop amplifier, before I apply RF, has a high input impedance, right? You bought an op amp, op amps typically 
have a high input impedance, right? This impedance is high. But that's okay, because at the end of the day, what matters to us is that we can take an input current and generate an output voltage, and that this circuit does that, right? Even though the op-amp that we placed here, per se, was not a transimpedance amplifier. The final result is still a transimpedance amplifier, right? Because it takes a current, it has a low input impedance, it uh, converts the current to a voltage at the output. So that's a transimpedance amplifier. All right? So you've got to get used to this idea. Okay, so this is a TIA. All right. Uh, now, uh, I would like to find the values of the circuit. So open loop values, closed loop values, and so on. Uh, so let's find, let's try to find the open loop parameters. Okay, so remember we thought of uh, when you don't have this RF here, so, so I'm going to break this loop, right? I'm going to break the loop so that I can find my open loop parameters. But now I encounter some difficulties, right? For example, I say, how much is the input impedance when the circuit is open loop? Well, it looks like I'm looking to an op amp at that input impedance could be very high. It could be infinity. So then that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? I need to take that input impedance and then divide it by one plus the loop gain to find the closed loop input impedance. All sorts of complications arise here, right? So uh, for now, we will not worry about this. Okay, so we will defer this to later. Right. To analyze this carefully in the open loop case, we need to have some other knowledge that we don't yet. So let's not worry about that. And uh, what we could do is look at the closed loop behavior directly. Okay, so closed loop parameters. All right, so here's that circuit, I haven't broken the loop. And I am curious about the closed loop gain and, for example, the closed loop input impedance. So, okay, so here's I in, going here, here's V out, and I'm asking what is the closed loop gain defined as V out over I in? All right, well, for a moment, I'll just forget about feedback. I right, so it's a simple circuit from electronics one, from circuits 101. I should be able to analyze it, right? Okay, and let's assume that the gain of this op-amp is very high. Then what happens? If the gain of the op-amp is very high, at this point is a virtual ground, so I call it Vx. Vx is close to zero, right? Okay, so that means that the current flowing through RF in this direction is V out over Vx over uh, V out minus Vx over RF, which is approximately equal to V out over RF. So this current is approximately equal to V out over RF. And now we write a KCL at this node. I in comes this way, this current comes this way, there's no current this way, they have to be equal and opposite. So this should be equal to minus I in. So V out over I in is equal to minus RF. That is the closed loop gain of this trans impedance amplifier. Right? It, has a, it has inversion, that's okay, and then it has some, unit, some value, two kilo ohms, right? The trans impedance gain of the circuit is two kilo ohms. So we managed to find it without knowledge of feedback, right? Okay. All right. How about the input impedance? So I am interested in the closed loop input impedance, and that would be the impedance that I see looking right in here, right? So this input impedance, how much is that? Well, 
uh, we can uh, approach this from different angles. Uh, uh, one possibility is, of course, to just find this voltage and over this current, and that will give us the values, not a big deal. But um, I'm thinking this resistor goes from one node of the circuit to another node of the circuit, right? And we know that if, we ha if I have a, an impedance or resistance or something between two nodes, Miller allows me to break it down into two grounded resistors. So let's do that, right? Miller says, take this impedance, divide it by one minus AV, and put it at the input, right? Okay, so Miller says, this is equivalent to doing this. You put a resistor here, and this, res this impedance will be divided by 1 minus AV. So this will be RF divided by 1 minus AV. The voltage gain from here to here is A0. That's what the op-amp does. So plus A0, right? It's minus A0 from here to here is plus A0. So that is the input impedance of the circuit, the closed loop circuit, right? I don't know anything about feedback, I'm just applying Miller's theorem, and that's what I get. Of course, there's something out here we don't care about right now, so don't worry about this, but that's what we get. So we see that the input impedance of the circuit is equal to RF over 1 plus A0. So uh, that sort of agrees with our intuition from our analysis of voltage current feedback, right? What was it that we decided? We said the input impedance will be the open loop input impedance divided by one plus the loop gain. So this is similar to that, right? It's very interesting that we're approaching this from so many different angles. Here I use Miller's theorem. Miller, Miller's theorem had nothing to do with feedback, right? Previously from feedback, we predicted this. You can just write KVLs and KCLs and find the input resistance. They all give us the same result. Okay, so each angle gives us additional insight into what the circuit is doing. All right, so uh, we won't worry about the output impedance in this case. This is just an example to see uh, what kind of uh, topologies can be viewed as voltage current feedback and what properties they offer. Okay, uh, let's uh, go ahead and I'll give you a quiz. Find the loop gain of the circuit. Okay, the circuit here, the circuit. Find the loop gain of the circuit. Of the circuit. Okay, I'll give you one minute to find the loop gain directly by breaking the loop and calculating the loop gain. All right, so what did you get? Okay, well, let's break the loop anywhere we want. Uh, for example, we break the loop uh, like this. At the feedback resistor, we inject a test signal here. We go around the loop. Uh, the input current source has to be set to zero, so it becomes an open circuit. And then we return here, right? Okay, so V test goes through RF. Well, how much is the voltage here? This voltage is equal to this voltage. Why? Because there's no current. 
if there's no current in this path, the input impedance of the op amp is infinite, so it doesn't draw any current. Uh, no current times RF gives us zero voltage here, right? So we have zero volts. That means that all of this voltage appears here. So this is also V test. And that means that this voltage is minus A0 V test. A0 being the gain of the op amp, right? So we see that Vf over V test is equal to minus A0. So the loop gain is just A0, right? So the loop gain is A0. Okay, so that's a quick analysis to show us what happens. All right, uh, this was uh, our study of the voltage uh, current feedback. I wanted to show you uh, one, um, uh, show, go to the next topology, which is what we call current voltage feedback. Current voltage feedback. All right, so by now, we are pretty good at this, right? So for a given topology, we quickly draw the general diagram. We make proper connections at the output and at the input, depending on what we're doing. And then we go ahead and find the closed loop parameters, the gain, the input impedance, and the output impedance, right? So same thing here. Current voltage feedback, what does it mean? It means that I buy an amplifier, A1, that receives a voltage and generates a current. So it has a current, which we call I out. Okay, and some voltage here. So what do we call the circuit? If you remember when we studied different types of amplifiers, we called this a transconductance amplifier, right? It's just a name, so this is called a trans conductance amplifier. And the gain has a unit, right? The gain is defined as the output current divided by the input voltage. So the gain is one over resistance. And in fact, the notation that we have for that is GM, right? Okay. All right, so we got that. And now we need to go and connect our feedback network so here's K. Uh, now, it's important to understand that if a circuit delivers a current, it cannot deliver a current to an open circuit, right? It always needs to connect to a short circuit or a load or something. If you leave it open, current times infinity, infinite impedance gives us infinite voltage. So this ordinarily would be connected to some load or maybe just a short circuit, right, in the simple case. Uh, but I'm trying to measure this current by this feedback network. So here's what I had. It was like a short circuit right here. But I need to measure a current. So if you remember in the past, if you want to measure a current through a wire, we have to cut the wire and put the current meter in series. So we're going to cut the wire here and put the current meter in series. Okay, that's how we measure the current. The current is measured in series. All right, the feedback network is supposed to generate a voltage because the input is also a voltage quantity. So here's our voltage quantity, V in, and our, all of these go in series, right, as we saw uh, for the voltage-voltage amplifier. So this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. So, we are measuring the output in series, we are measuring, it's returning the input in series, so that's why we call this also a series, series feedback topology. All right, what is the unit of K? Well, this has the unit of one over resistance, so this has to be resistance. So this would have, would have a unit of resistance, so it would be in ohms. Very strange, but true. Okay, all right. Uh, also, uh, how much should the input resistance be here? We have a circuit that's trying to measure a current. And if you remember, 
to measure a current, we don't want to disturb the network, so we want to have zero resistance. So ideally, this could be zero resistance, right? Previously, I had just the circuit. A1 was delivering a current to this loop. He was perfectly happy. Then I wanted to measure that current. I cut this loop and I introduced this. So for this A1 not to feel that, this impedance should be zero, right? So that it doesn't know we are measuring that current. On this side, what's going on? We are returning a voltage. So this circuit, this output port should act as a good voltage source. So this output resistance should be zero in the ideal case. All right, now let's turn our attention to the main amplifier. Uh, how much is the input impedance in the ideal case? It's a voltage sensing device, right? So its input impedance should be infinity in the ideal case. And how about here? It's a device that wants to deliver a current. It wants to act as a good current source, so its output impedance should be infinite. So this port should have infinite output impedance. These are all in the ideal case. Okay, very good. So now we are ready to go ahead and find the various parameters of the circuit, the closed loop input and output impedances, the, volt, the gain, and so forth, right? This is a transconductance amplifier. So the gain has the unit of one over resistance, right? So the gain is this current divided by this voltage, and it has the unit of one over resistance. All right, so let's go ahead and find the closed loop gain. Should be pretty straightforward based on what we've done in the past. So closed loop gain. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna start from uh, here. Uh, let me change the color. This current is the same as this current, right? KCL has to satisfy it right at this interface, right? Any charge that goes this way has to come out this way. So that current flows this way, I out, into the feedback network. So then how much is this voltage here? The feedback network says, I will take my current, my input current, multiply by the feedback factor and give you a voltage. So this voltage is given by K times I out. All right, then how much is this voltage? It's just this minus this, right? So the voltage appearing at the input of A1 is given by V in minus K I out. All right, that's easy enough. And then A1 says, if you give me a voltage, I will multiply by my gain and deliver a current. So A1 takes this, multiplies it by its transconductance gain, and gives us the output current, I out. So now we can find I out over V in. That's the closed loop gain, right? So I out over V in. We can see that is the open loop gain divided by one plus the loop gain, right? So it's uh, the open loop gain divided by one plus the loop gain as expected. <clears throat> All right, so that was easy. Okay, uh, the next order of business is to find the input resistance of the closed loop circuit. All right, what do we expect? We expect that the input resistance should be higher because we are returning a voltage to the input. We're trying to build a better voltage sensing device. So if you remember, this is what we did. We placed an R in here. This is the input resistance of the open loop circuit, right? The original amplifier that I bought. And now I'm trying to find the input resistance from here for the whole circuit. Okay, so if this is V in, let's go ahead and say this current is I in. So my objective is to find V in over I in. Should be that hard, right? All right, so I in comes in, flows through R in, and generates a voltage. So closed loop input impedance. All right, so I in goes in, gets multiplied by R in, generates a voltage, right? And then this amplifier says, I will take my voltage, multiply by GM, and generate a current. 
So it multiplies it by gm and gives us a current, this current. This current arrives at k. k says I will take that current and multiply by k and give you a voltage. So multiply it by k gives us this voltage. Now we write the KVL here, right? So this voltage subtracted from this gives me this voltage. So I can say this voltage, which I found, V in minus that, this voltage subtracted from this should be this voltage. How much is this voltage? I in times R in, right? So I in times R in. So now we can find V in over I in. And as expected, the input impedance goes up by a factor of 1 plus the loop gain, 1 plus gm times k. Okay, so that was easy enough. All right, this concludes this lecture. Next time we'll come back to this topology and study it more. I will see you next time.